And in these words that the Prophet ﷺ addressed to Abi Hurairah, the first one was how to be the true worshipper to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to be a true worshipper. Qala, uh, the first one, Qala, ittaqil maharam takun a'bad al-nas. Ittaqil maharam takun a'bad al-nas. Shield yourself, prevent from violating the way of Allah, be obedient to Allah, be away from the uh, everything that is haram you'll be a true worshiper. And we have, uh, alhamdulillah, went through this wasiyah and uh, defining how the haram uh, it is to be defined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us is a mercy. And to know the haram, uh, to look at it, so uh, will, will in, in a way that it will help you to be uh, far from the haram when you know it is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like someone telling you, be aware from the fire, and you never saw the fire. And then when you see the fire and you know the, how dangerous it is to be around the fire or to fall on the fire, you really uh, turn and you remember the one who warned you from the fire. Say, what a great person, honest, honorable, noble, caring, watchful to tell me such a thing. This is how, in a way, as a parable, an example, and walillahi al-mathal al-a'la, to look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, define, and for us as a haram, to look at it as a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we came to, you know, one of the facts to be uh, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect ourselves from the shaitan. And the shaitan is a reality. It's not something that, you know, uh, not like today people, they believe the thing that they don't see. Therefore, it cannot be a subject of belief. And the word believing in the unseen, that the first thing, subhanAllah, that define the journey to a belief. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentioned the believer, قَالَ Those who believe in the unseen. Therefore, the first element, the first aspect, the first core, let's say, or actually the core of the life of the believer is to believe in the unseen. If people, they want to call it whatever names they want to call it, those people, it either are in the way of atheism or in the way of a very progressive, secular way of thinking. And that, subhanAllah, nothing have to do with the believer when it comes his relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَ لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ yeah. You have your deen, and they'll have alhamdulillah, my deen. You know, as many people, they want to argue about your deen. You, say, you know, alhamdulillah, I said, do you feel peaceful? You say, yes, I do. Do you feel comfortable with what you believe? He said, yes. I feel peaceful, I feel comfortable. So I try to keep your peace. So just keep my peace alone. Leave my peace alone. You know, I want to be, alhamdulillah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided me to, to believe in, that's an honor for me. It might be some for other people called disgrace, or calling to be astray, or calling to be insane, or called to be, you know, something, nothing have to, does not make sense. Alhamdulillah, for the thing that does not make sense, if it make me, give me peace, for alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And we know from us that is the truth, and it is the certainty. So when we're talking about the shaitan, the shaitan is reality. The shaitan is from the jinn. The jinn, they are around us. We don't see them. Among the jinn are believers, and among the jinn are uh, disbelievers. The disbeliever among the jinn, those who are wicked ones, they are shayateen, and the shaitan. It means the wicked and deviated one. That's why they're shayateen of ins and shayateen of jinn, shayateen from the humankind and the shayteen, shayateen of the, uh, the jinn kind. The shaytan that uh, all of you know, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed and, uh, you know, he expelled uh, him from hellfire is Iblis la'anahullah. Iblis has this uh, one particular, uh, let's say, favor, I will say favor, you know, between parentheses is not favor. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to live to the day of judgment. Allah grant him this 
wish. So he's the only one who will be, subhanAllah, alive to the day of judgment. He's mortal, not immortal. He's going to die when? In the end of time. And he will going to be running from east to west, running from Malik al Maut. Wherever he runs, <laughs> you'll find Malik al Maut in front of him. Say, Where are you running? <laughs> because you know the jinn, they have power. SubhanAllah, they have some of the jinn they fly, some of the jinn they dive, you know, they live in the ocean, some of the jinn, you know, like, like reptiles, some of the jinn like, uh, you know, wild uh, beasts. Adhanallahu wa iyakum in the jinn. For this is a thing that we believe in. So when we talk about it, people they always think well, that we are talking about something that it uh, sometimes is like we, uh, some people, they, they arrange it or they put it, they classify it from the stories to tell, like fortune teller story, like myths. No, no, this is not myth, this is reality. And subhanAllah, if you just reflect with yourself, you're going to know who is the shaitan. You just reflect in your thoughts. And many people who are like, you know, they have anxiety and depression and voices in their minds and everything. There's things that it really can be, of course, you know, uh, be, you know, kind of in, in a clinical, clinical way explained, uh, in, in, in the, the world of medicine explained. But there's thoughts, subhanAllah, the problem when, when the believer he accept and believe in science. You know, because science and religion, they go together in Islam, you know. And the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the revelation in the way to be, subhanAllah, enlighten and give light to the brain to have more reasoning and better reasoning, not to stop the reasoning. Do you know, in certain, in the middle evil, um, in the medieval, there is scholars of the people of the book who has forbidden, even actually not, not like that far, maybe in the uh, 17th and 18th century, and later on too in some European countries, where it was forbidden for the, for the kids to learn, to write, you know. Uh, that's why to, to the very late time, uh, in the beginning of the 20th centuries, they still, the children, they go to, to labor, right? Then they had them to make education and everything that started there. By the way, when you think why they have summer break, summer break because they still go to the labor to help, you know, in collecting the harvest. So that's why. So uh, why they were, you know, they don't want them to learn. Because some people of the people of the book, who scholars, you know, especially from the church, they said it's really ruined their very basic belief. When they read and they learn, they question. And they question the Savior. Therefore, they spoil and they ruin their own belief. So to protect their belief, they should not read and do right. This is written by proof. You know, you can go back and, uh, and check it. Fa, we believe in science, but also in the unseen. Because if we don't believe in the unseen, then we don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you think of that and you believe in it, reflect on the thoughts that you have in your mind, voices. Like normal voices, okay, not like the voice really that makes someone who's like have, uh, you know, multiple personalities and so on. But there's voices, uh, subhanAllah, voices that they talk to you, that they want you to do something. If you see something, say, oh yeah, buy it, buy it, now buy it, I want it, buy it, buy it. And then you're driving, buy it, buy it, buy it. And then you get home, buy it, buy it. When you go to sleep, you ignore it, you eat, and then you sleep. And when you wake up, say, buy it, buy it, it's still there. It's example. That's, these thoughts are yourself. 
هذا حديث النفس حديث ماذا؟ النفس The nafs has its weakness toward one particular desire. The shaitan different. The shaitan, he'll subhanallah try to get you into a numb situation, like heedless, No. Make you feel heavy. I'll give you examples. And then, when you see something, he'll try to push you. When you resist, he does not continue. He'll change the route. Say, look, look, look there. He said, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. And then he will turn something else. He said, this is tasteful, eat it. You know, the shaitan is smart. It does not, the shaitan does not pick on one desire. He's changing. And then he has something else, which is, you know, to, subhanAllah, make you kind of try to enchain you, that you cannot do anything. For example, uh, you, you are fine. It's time of Salat al-Isha, and you're supposed to pray. Yeah. Uh, as soon as you intend to pray, and you're going to pray, suddenly you have a million times that you have to do, right? Uh, or you, you have to check your email, you didn't save the message, uh, the garage door is closed, did I get uh, the thing from the car? All the thing comes on the time. That's the shaitan. That's no, you're like you think that you are being very uh, careful of things. No, why did it happen then? Then it has another tactic. If you want to do good, the shaitan, like subhanAllah, uh, have you to, to waste your time in something that is not fruitful. It's not uh, uh, beneficial. As soon as you feel tired, you cannot do anything. You feel the enthusiasm to do a lot of things, to read a book, to review some Quran, but it's already too late. As soon as you get it, you sleep. These people say, why do we sleep when we go read? He said, actually the shaitan they let you to read when he was sure that you will not be able to read. <laughs> so this is the shaitan, truly. This is how you can decipher how you can personalize the shaitan into your own thoughts. Okay? Time. After saying this, we have mentioned some of the story uh, of the uh, shaitan la'ana Allah, but to help ourselves also, um, you know, uh, be careful of the whispering of the shaitan. Uh, there is something people, they really get into uh, deep, and maybe the trigger of their anxiety is are this, uh, the, sh uh, the, the whispering of the shaitan. Uh, I'll give you an example. Maybe Actually, everyone has it. Everyone has it. You might have in your mind a thought that is very ugly thought. Something that unbearable, something that is very bad. A thought of, uh, of something, a major sin. The problem, if we do embrace it, as our thought, it hurts so deeply. Say, you know, how can I think such a thing? So you blame yourself, you subhanAllah, turn against yourself and fill yourself with a lot of remorse, and you develop that feeling of guilt. And that feeling of guilt, if you cannot get rid of it, or you don't know how to get rid of it, it becomes a disease becomes a disease. That's when psychologically someone will be beat up and ending up by going, you know, to hospital and thinking, taking pills and so on. How to get rid of that? When you have an ugly thought, you have to stop and say, this is not you. Nothing have to do with you. That's the shaitan. That is the shaitan. When you have an ugly thought, 
be careful to say, how can I think of such a thing? You have to smile and say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Because that's not you. And you move on. And try it. If you move on, it's not going to come back. Then you realize truly really, that was not you at all. Wada. We mentioned what the shaitan said to Musa. Then I told you that they're going to st- tell you the story of the monk of Bani Israel. I didn't say it in the time. So this introduction, to see that the worshiper, you know, uh, that worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for long years in, in Sawma, in a tower, a minaret, kind of a minaret. Okay? All in worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look the shaitan, what he's going to do to this person. Tayyip. Qala, I start the story. Kana abidun fi bani Israel min a'badi ahli zaman. He was one of the biggest worshippers, or the greatest worshipper of his time. No one by his piety, by his, by his righteousness. And قال وكان في زمانه ثلاثة ثلاثة إخوة لهم أخت وكانت بكرا ليس لهم أخت غيرها. There's three brothers who have a sister, young, I mean, young, I mean, non-married sister, virgin. That's how they describe them at the time, uh, and they do not have any other sister. They had a battle in their time, and all the brother, the draw, brought their three names to go to the, to the war. They have to go by obligation, so they didn't know where to leave their sister. قَالَ فَلَمْ يَدْرُوا عِنْدَ مَنْ يَخْلُفُونَ أُخْتَهُمْ وَلَا مَنْ يَأْمَنُونَ عَلَيْهَا وَلَا عِنْدَ مَنْ يَضَعُونَ they need someone of trust to whom they're going to entrust their sister. Then they, all of them, they agreed to have asked the worshipper of Bani Israel to help them with this matter. And it was a person known by his trustworthy truthfulness and so on. They came to him, they asked him, of course, he said, there is no way. قال فأبى وتعوذ بالله. He said no. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. I will never do this. It's, it's not it's not my business at all. I don't do. قال فلم يزال به حتى أطاعه. Still insisting and begging. You know this is our sister. We're going to war. You are our, our you know worshipper. You are the rightest person. If you cannot help us, who can help us? You are the only person that we trust, and so on and so on and so on. قال after they insisted قال فأنزلوها في بيت حذاء okay he said then have her to dwell there is a, a room or a house next to the minaret so it's like the minaret here and you go out of the minaret and then you take a walk short walk to get to this small house he said you can leave her there and uh, you know I will, I will have a way to, to watch over her. قال ثم انطلق وتركوها فمكثت في جوار ذلك العابد زمانا ينزل إليها بالطعام من صومعته ثم يأمرها فتخرج من بيتها فتأخذ ما وضع لها من الطعام. So how the way of the communication? He bring down the food. He put in front of his minaret, the door. He called. There is a signal, and he goes. She come out, she get the food, and she enter. Very safe. He will not. He does not know even how she looks. قال فتلطف له الشيطان فلم يزل به يرغبه في الخير ويعظم عليه خروج الجارية من بيتها نهارا ويخوف أن يراها أحد فيعلقها. فلو مشيت بطعامها حتى تضع على باب بيتها كان أعظم لأجرك. The shaitan start to to do his work. He said, 
you, is, you've been entrusted this girl. What if she goes in the, in, out in the, in the day and someone will see her? Maybe he's going to have a bad thought. And you are ignoring her. That's not right. If this is fulfilling a trust, at least take the food and pour it in front of her door, not in front of your door, and you leave. Just you need to be kind. And this is Allah will reward you more. <laughs> That's subhanAllah. So subhanAllah, and it starts, look, the shaitan has the whole time. Whole time. It does not have any other job. Just to be in your head. Huh? So whatever he turn on the side, on the left, he think he throw those images in his, like he becomes like a remorse. And subhanAllah, everything starts with idea, and then after idea, it becomes heavy on your heart. Why you didn't do this? Uh, and this is great reward. And really, if someone will see her, how I'm going to protect her, and so on and so on. So he kept insisting the shaitan, whispering, whispering, till he started to do it. Put just the food in front of her door. SubhanAllah, it took a long time. It took, uh, uh, it, uh, it took a long time. Then to put the food in front of her door and then just to tell her a nice word because she's lonely, just open the door. You say, Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam and that's it. That's it. Not more. He get to that. Then, subhanAllah, he said she's been lonely, her, her brother is like far away and so on. Uh, there is no harm if you just enter and make her feel like you are one, like, uh, like her father, uh, like you take care of her. This girl, you know, no, nobody been talking to her, uh, do this for the sake of Allah and so on. And this is all a trying to uh, admonish for him the good. So it's like, you know, encouraging him to do good. Because when someone, for example, say, oh, this is beautiful, you can get close to her. Of course, he's not going to do that. This is all good. Be kind, good. Be someone like her father is good. She's lonely and talk to her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you, you know, to have a believer, you know, just uh, fight their loneliness. It's all good. Right. Till subhanallah came to the point slowly, slowly, slowly. Till qala falaw dakhalta al-bayta ma'aha fahaddathaha walam tatrukha tabruz wajha li ahad kan ahsan bik. I mean, why you have her to be tempted to go out maybe just you as in the place of her father to enter and you talk to her and to, to you know to have her be feel comfortable and so on he get to the house and then we'll shorten it he did what what the shaitan want him to do a years before Subhanallah, she had uh, delivered a baby. You know, she has a boy, a ghulam. Now, this big calamity for this habit happened. If someone will think, you know, what the shaitan want to do more? The shaitan never stops. That's what we need to understand. The shaitan never stops. Qala Iblis, Araayta in jaeh wa tuljariya wa kadulidat min kakeifa tasna. Now, subhanallah, look, after pushing a person to fall into fahisha, the necklace will be into crime. Adam, subhanAllah, going up. He told him, now, if 
her brothers, her brother, they come back and you find that you have impregnated her and you have a boy with her. What are they going to say? What are you going to do? SubhanAllah reminding you at every step there is a way out. At every step there is a way out with Allah. So he's a great worshipper. He's a great worshipper. What does he mean? He's a human being. Taib, you did such a thing. Run back to Allah and repent. Correct it. Sah? But the shaitan, subhanallah, he introduced other tactic. The other one is shahwa. The first, like good, do good. You know, increasing good, get more reward. Then when he get him, you know, in a very covered way to come to the end time or to the end point to have his shahwa fall there, he fell into the shah. So it was not the tactic of the shaitan to have him get more reward, but to, to fall into the zina. Now that he fell into the zina, he's going to continue his tactic, which now is a change like the fear and the scandal and the to be subhanallah, you know, uh, how can we face this, uh, you know, shame or the thing that he had done? The problem here for all of us, there is subhanallah uh, that uh, social custom, social pressure. The person forget his relation with Allah. He only consider what people they're going to say. Say, first think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what Allah is going to, how Allah is seeing your action. Forget about people. So th the problem here, the Abid, you know, he lost everything. But with Allah, he didn't lose everything. I mean, there's a way out. Go repent. Even if you're going to, you know, pay for your sin, with the, with the punishment, dunya we punishment, at least you, call, you, you had made the peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the most important in this step of this story, whenever, subhanAllah, the shaitan push us with our will or against our will, with our weakness, or we have plot for it to do something bad. Do not give up there. Stand. The first one that you need to look at is Allah. Look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're going to feel ashamed. You want subhanAllah the, the earth to swallow you. You want to run away. But then you remember he is a Rahman Rahim. Then, لا ملجأ من الله إلا إليه. You cannot run away from him, but to run back to him. That the shaitan what does not want you to do. That's why as soon as someone fall into, uh, subhanallah, a shameful thing, the shaitan brings something else that nothing have to do with the first shameful thing. He's going to face, have you to face another difficulty. What their brother is going to do if they learn that you have done it. So it's like we, he erased Allah from the picture. That's why the Abid cannot compare to the knowledgeable person. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Faddu al-alim, al-alim, he has his bounty and his, you know, uh, reward and esteem in the eye of Allah, like 70 worship. Because the worship of worship becomes like more of forum and the soul is gone. There is no wisdom. There is no relation. It becomes like pray, 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 pray. Today I hand the raka, tomorrow I'm going to do 200 raka. 200 raka more if you make two raka with khushua better than thousand raka so this is very important this point if someone fall into shameful thing the first thing look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't look to people 
Because if you look to Allah, Allah is able to protect you from people, to cover you. Innahu sattir, he going to subhanallah make a cover and get you out of it without any one knows. But if per person is concerned the people, what the people they're going to say, I have to stop this. Then you are worshipping people, not worshipping Allah. This is what happened. قال لا آمن أن تفتضح أو يفضحوك. so the shaitan telling him I I I cannot we cannot guarantee anymore that you might be like you know the shameful thing will be known by people or if they learn they going to cause you a big scandal. it becomes like I am a worshipper. what people they gonna say about me? you see the big problem. you say hold on your relation is with Allah. You get you gain a status of worshipper for people to say he's a worshipper. But if they say he's a worshipper, you are already in hellfire. Well, I hear the bill. قال تسحر جهنم بثلاث عالم وقارئ وشهيد. The the hellfire, be subhanallah, started the fuel, the startup of hellfire. Three category of people. Among them, a knowledge or a qara, and a shaheed, and someone who has, who was very rich, and he used to give in the sake of Allah. Say, the first one said, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you arifuhu bi nihmatih. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tell him, did I not give you this? Did I not give you this? He said, yes, ya Allah, yes, Allah, yes, Allah. What have you done with all the gifts? What I have you done with the money I gave you with all this? He said, yeah, Allah. I give it sadaqah in this in your sake. I build this in your sake, ya Allah. I said, no, you're a liar. You did it for people to see, to say he was a generous people, generous person. And they have said, so you get your reward. Be careful. This is the reward of the nafs. To people say, oh, so and so is great, and when you see it, read it, they say he feels so good inside. So that's what he was looking for. The second is a scholar, is a person of knowledge, and may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to protect us all. We are seeing with our own eyes in this life today, in this world, how Subhanallah a few years ago, people who are like you know regarded with high esteem, scholars. How Subhanallah, because of political situation or because of statement in defending certain, you know, people, Subhanallah, how they fell in the eyes of people, right? So you see it with your own eyes. So it's not like someone is a scholar that he's uh, uh, Subhanallah uh, free of sins or ma'soom. He's not gonna fall into sins. لا يا إخوان. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him, did I not bestow upon you the knowledge, the gift of knowledge? What have you done with this knowledge? Did I not bestow upon you the gift of the Qur'an? What have you done with the Qur'an? So he said, yeah, Allah, I taught the knowledge in your sake and I spread the, your message and I spread your words of the Qur'an. He said, no, you're a liar. You did it for the people to say he was a great, smart scholar. You did it for the people to say he was a great qara. And you get, and they said it, which is me like you get reward. So you don't have any reward from Allah. You were seeking the reward that you got it. The same for the one who dies in a battlefield uh, that this, uh, you know, battle was initiated or done for establishing justice in the sake of Allah. And this person dies. And then when he comes in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, said, I did it for your sake. He said, you're lying. You did it for people to say how brave he was. And they said, and they had your name, you know, and they make like a, a yearly celebration to stand and make their hand like this in front of you and in front of the dead people like you. And then they said it. So how can you get the reward from Allah? This is the situation here. Because if you have a true belief, 
the shaitan cannot get out of your weakness the shaitan can get you into doing something bad but the shaitan if you have sincere strong belief deep down he cannot get you to the next level قال لا آمن أن تفتضح أو يفضحك فاعمد إلى ابنها فاذبحه وادفنه فإنها ستكتم ذلك عليك مخافة إخوتها أن يطلعوا ما صنعت بها ما صنعت بها. He said what you should do kill the baby and bury it. She's not gonna say anything. Because she will not dare say to her brother what you have done with her. So this is, I mean, the baby is the proof of the zila. So erase this proof. He killed the baby. And then after he did, he came back to him after a while. He said, you think that you killed her baby? Is she going to not say, this is very risky. You should kill her. <laughs> he did. A worshiper, known by his worship, people they come to him make dua for us. And subhanAllah, the shaitan was playing with this soul of worship like one playing in, with the ring in his finger. He led him to commit zina. He led him to kill an innocent soul and a second innocent soul. So he buried them both. When they came back, the brothers, they came to the habit. They sit with him and things. And then he said, can we see our sister? He said, Al Baqa'u Lillah. Your sister, she was a great uh, girl and everything, but she got sick, very sick, and she died, and this is where I buried her. And the, the brother, they crying and everything. Something, these things happen. They left home. When, subhanAllah, this is the shaitan. Because the, subhanAllah, the masterpiece of the shaitan is not completed. You have to understand. It never stops with the shaitan. Till he gets you out of the deed. So when then it came the night and they went to sleep, the shaitan came into their dreams. All of them in an image of a traveler person, and he started with the older one, he said, where is your sister? So in the dream, he said, oh, the, the, the worshiper told us she got sick and everything. He said, no, he's a liar. He did and did, and their grave actually is by the house on the left side of the door with her baby, you know. Then he wake up, he said, this is a bad dream. You know, you think of a worshiper, you know, an elderly person, loved by people, trustworthy, that's impossible. SubhanAllah, he saying the second one, and then the younger one. When they woke up, one of them, he said, yesterday I saw something very strange. He said, what about? He said, about our sister. He said, I saw the same thing. The young one, he said, I saw the same thing. He said, you know, this is just, uh, you know, uh, dreams and dreams is not to be like, let's forget about it. So the young one, he said, no, I will not forget about it. I have a feeling. I mean, it does not cost us anything to go to the place that we, all of them, all of us, we saw it in a dream and to dig and see. And subhanAllah, they went and they digged and they found what the shaitan told them in the dream. What happened, they took the worshiper, of course, to the court, and then here, uh, a death, you know, sentence was, you know, like, uh, provided or like either the death sentence was given to, the, to this worshiper. 
قال أوثقوه على الخشبة. They got him to be crucified. So everybody know what the worshiper did. The brother they know. The judgment was very clear and death sentence. Still, the masterpiece of shaitan is not completed. While Subhanallah, he's you know attached to be crucified and killed, he came to him. He told him, "I'm your friend, who had tried you with the woman, and then to get from with her the baby, and then you killed her and killed her baby." If you obey me today, I know everything. I'm being for. I'm the one who did it. I will be able to save you now. قال فإن أطعتني اليوم وكفرت بالذي خلقك. If you just obey me today and you deny Allah, the one who created you, I will save you. سبحان الله. قال قال فكفر العابد. The عابد. He denied Allah at that moment. He said in another narration, he said, how can I do that? He said, just make sujood. You cannot make sujood, I'm attached. He said, just with your head. Subhanallah, as soon as he did it with his head, his life is gone. He died. This is, Akhwani, the story related to the ayah in Surah Al-Hashr. كَمَثَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِذْ قَالَ لِلْإِنسَانُ كفر. The parable of the shaitan, when he said to the human, disbelieve in Allah. فَلَمَّا كَفَرْ When he disbelieved in Allah, قَالَ إِنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِنْكَ I am free of you. I'm innocent from what you've been doing. Indeed, I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what the shaitan. Saying to make the person feel more regretful, when regret is already done, far. No one can, subhanAllah, be able for the regret to be benefit them uh, when it comes to after death, when the regret, it's not beneficial and anymore. Because today, if you do something, regret is part of the process of the repentance. Regret in the akhirah, if someone will eat his fingers, and Allah, told us how, how they will be biting on their finger. If they not only bite, they eat their fingers, it does not change anything. It's too late. فَكَانَ عَاقِبَتَهُمَا أَنَّهُمَا فِي النَّارِ خَالِدَيْنِ فِيهَا وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الظَّالِمِينَ So their end, it was that they were both in hellfire for eternity. And thus is the reward of Abdalim, the wrongdoer, the uh, transgressors. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from transgression. Khwani, this is a true story. And this is Allah mentioned it in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran the last piece of it. Because if the worshiper did any step before that, he could have been saved. Banished, that's it. He did. He killed. He, he, he deserved to be banished. But he dies as a believer. He dies with dignity, making sujood to Allah. Not still wishing to be saved by someone who does not have any authority, or does, one who does not have any power. The, the shaitan, again, Let's have two conclusions of this. Never give up from the Rahmah of Allah whatever sin you commit. Never. Second, the shaitan will never stop as long as you still breathe. He will come at the, your deathbed and he will tell you, actually, I'm your mother, I'm your father. And they want you to let you know that the religion that you've been following is wrong. 
Deny it now before it's too late. Never stops. So if you do not work on your belief to strengthen it, if you do not practice today to chase out the shaitan from your mind and from your heart, and you know who you are, because if you are confused, if you have thoughts that you embrace, that is really is going to change your deep identity inside. It's like you make you think like people, you know, uh, they, they make think people that they are bad inside. It's like uh, one commercial they had before that, uh, you know, even that inclination, someone to be inclined to some odd and weird way of, uh, of you know, of relationship. They said, unleash, unleash your nature. Say, Wallahi Kadhib, you are liars. There's no nature inside any human being to be like that. But subhanAllah, when the shaitan confuse the person and make that thought to be in one's mind, when you embrace it, you feel like he's your, from your nature. And then you believe that's why people are against my nature. I said, that's not your nature, that's the shaitan way of embedded in you a fake nature that you embrace. Why? By the absence and the lack of wisdom, and no one can have wisdom if you do not have iman. We'll stop here, insha'Allah ta'ala. We'll continue next time with some of other techniques of the shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the shaitan. And remember that the cunning of the shaitan is weak. And then there is a beautiful story between Shaqiq uh, al-Balkhi and his student Hatim al-Asam. We'll listen to Imam Hatim al-Asam, what he has learned from his sheikh that he was in his companionship for 30 years.